Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG. Today on HOA HAM, we're going to complete the torture test on the G Gable GRA 7350T lightweight, portable, vertical, broadbanded HF antenna that's slowly making its way into my emergency go bag. To find a place in that kit, you have to be able to withstand some abuse. First, we put it through a 30-day extreme weather torture test here on the southwest coast of Florida in the middle of summer exposing it to UV rays, 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, day in and day out, and 30 days of constant afternoon and daily rain showers. Some of you may ask, Bob, why did you even waste your time with a 30-day extreme weather test? It's an antenna. Of course, it should be able to handle some inclement weather. We'll look at what this antenna is. It's a small, lightweight, collapsible antenna. It begs to be carried in your backpack, not be permanently installed at the QTH in the backyard. So I don't think it was designed to be a permanent install. So how long could it be erected permanently, so to speak, and still work. That was the purpose of the torture test. I expect to set this up for hours at a time, perhaps days at a time, perhaps a week. If it goes into my emergency go bag, this thing will not be set up permanently where I just set it up and walk away. If there's an emergency, I'm also going to have to protect this, which is another good feature of it. It's small, it can easily be set up and taken down. But if it's going to go into my go bag, it darn well better be able to handle some nasty weather, and that's why we did it. Is it designed as a permanent outside install antenna? If that's what you're trying to do, this is not the antenna for you. This is a lightweight, portable, temporary setup and breakdown as needed antenna. Put it out there for 30 days to see how the weather affected it. It shouldn't have affected it but I wanted to make sure before it goes into my go bag. That was my logic. This is uh, pretty much where we had it for 30 days pre-hurricane, so no impact of having this exposed to weather, which is what I would have expected. Using this thread adapter, we're going to go ahead and attach some heavier telescoping antennas on top of this sliding coil. You've watched me open and close or expand and contract this sliding coil. It has a polymer nut here that you tighten down, and when you tighten it down, it, it holds the coil in place. Well, this was designed to handle a three ounce telescoping antenna. What happens when we put something like the MFJ 1979 weighing in at almost a pound? It's 13 ounces more. Will this be okay on top of this sliding and telescoping uh, coil? Will this polymer nut be able to hold it in place? I'll show you some of the tests that I have done on that. Additionally, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give this a break and bend test. Can Bob destroy this with his bare hands? We're going to do a drop test of this out onto a concrete slab the way that I would normally carry it in my go bag. We're going to look at the tripod system as well because this tripod also was out there for 30 days. Does this tripod function any different today than when it did when we first put it in place out there at the start of the extreme weather test? Let's get on with it. How did our tripod survive the 30 day extreme weather torture test, extreme heat, constant sun beating on it and constant showers throughout the day, afternoon and evening? Well, I've only have two observations about the tripod. One of them, actually both of them are irrelevant to me, but I do wanna share them in full disclosure. So this was a tripod that I've already owned for several months. I've been testing and using the GRA uh, 7350T along with this mounting tripod for many months now. And early on, I did notice that the, the foam rubber on the leg here um, did get a cut in it. I don't remember how that occurred, and I believe somewhere there's another small one on these legs. Now, there's really no function to this foam rubber. It feels good to the touch, but if it wasn't on this leg to begin with, I never would have questioned anything. But it, it does do that. And on this particular tripod, it did um, gain a cut. Don't know how, I don't know if that's important to you. It's not important to me, but we could call that you know, a failure because I don't think we would expect to see that just after a couple of months. Again, don't know what I did to cause that. It's not important to me. Perhaps it's important to you. It bears no relevance to the functionality of the tripod and getting on the air. The other thing that I noticed after the 30 day extreme weather torture test is that the, the legs here are just a little bit stiffer. That's the only word I can think of 
they still function. Everything clicks and locks just like it did before, but they're, they're stiffer. So it's almost as though some water perhaps got into the mechanism here. And the first thought would be, well, it created some corrosion. But I have looked at this very close up and under high magnification, and I do not see any corrosion anywhere on this particular joint or on that screw, the washer, the spring inside. I can't see any corrosion inside of here. So I don't know what has caused it. I just know that after 30 days of exposure out there in the sun, the uh, UV light and the constant rain, these legs operate just a little bit stiffer. Does that change the functionality of the antenna? Not in any way, shape or form, but it is a difference. And in full disclosure, I'm just sharing that with you. It doesn't bother me, but it's just what has changed. What about the telescoping legs? Did they function any differently after the torture test? Why? No, they don't. They function the exact same way that they did before. No difference, twist, pull, lock, they stay in place. No difference on the telescoping legs. All good there. Let's talk about adding weight to the gable antenna by going from this three ounce telescoping width to something more like the MFJ 1979. This weighs in at three ounces and our MFJ 1979 that we have on this right now weighs in at just around a pound. What happens with this coil when you raise it and lower it? Well, it does have a polymer nut here that when you tighten down on that nut, everything stays in place. But adding 13 extra ounces by putting a larger, heavier antenna on top of it, what happens? I did take and put this outside and tested it for two different periods of 24 hours. I extended this five inches, came back 24 hours later, and it had not shifted down at all. And then I did the same thing by extending it the entire way and came back in 24 hours and found the same thing, that it stays in place after a short period of time, which is precisely what, you know, we all would have expected from this antenna. But what would happen over the long term? It is intended, obviously, it's a small, lightweight, portable antenna meant for setup and breakdown frequently. But if you leave this outside for extended period of times, is this going to begin to creep down on you? Well, I think that's going to take weeks, if not months or longer, to test that out. We know that we can make it move because even when I torque down on this polymer nut with enough, enough pressure, okay, I can make it move. I don't know how many pounds of force I just applied to it, but I can make it move. It's not easy to make it move, but you can do it. So I think you're fine to go with this more heavy duty uh, telescoping antenna on top of it. I'm going to be using my seven element man pack portable. That's one of my favorite antennas for my go bag. But there are times I operate with either the SS17 or the MFJ1979. You're good to go. You need this adapter, which I've already shown you in another video. I don't think the weight is an issue for the durability of the antenna system. The legs will telescope out further so you get more stability. Again, I've already shown that in multiple videos. And I think you're going to be okay if you tune your antenna based on the height of your telescoping antenna. You tune your coil. I think you're good to go. So let's try to break this with our bare hands. I'm not going to do that to this telescoping antenna. Let's face it, none of us expect this to be able to withstand my torquing on it. Can it withstand some nasty wind? Well, certainly it can. But we all know that this was not designed to be set up permanently. This was designed to be set up, taken down. We do not expect this to survive me bending on it. That would be a waste of a perfectly good piece of gear. So we're not going to do a bend and break test on this. The sliding coil, however, well, let's go at it. Now, Bob's not gonna win any world's strongest man contests, but I can still open pickle jars for the XYL. I don't have any problem carrying 40 pound bags of salt for the water softener, and I can still pick up a 60 pound bag of sackcrete at the local Home Depot. So uh, I have some strength left in these old bones of mine. So can we break it? I'm not gonna show you my face bulging and getting red, but I am, I am torquing on it. I don't really feel give, and it's not, obviously, it's not breaking. 
it's not breaking. Well, well perhaps, uh, perhaps this has something to do with that, you think? Well, let's, let's fully take that out. It's fully extended. Let's try again. I, I really don't feel give. There might be a little flex there. I don't feel flex. This is fiberglass reinforced polymer. It's quite strong. I cannot break this with my bare hands. That does not mean it's not breakable. It means it's pretty strong. We'll put this in a drop test in a little while and see how it does. I first got into ham radio because of emergency preparedness. And that led very quickly to a go bag. This bag in particular is kind of like a photography bag, individual compartments inside with removable dividers that you can put gear in. I loaded it up very quickly with ham gear. All of a sudden I outgrew it and I went to a larger go bag, larger in every direction. And what I soon realized is this bag was so heavy, I wouldn't even be able to carry it for a half block without wearing out my back and my shoulders. So that kind of led to the search for smaller gear that was just as effective as all the gear that takes up all of this space. And the G Gable antenna, HF small portable antenna, was a start to that activity. And you can see that once I put this in the pouch, this antenna won't even be cinched into the locking mechanism, which means I have to go to a smaller bag than this and even a smaller bag than this. My antenna systems are always carried in some type of protective case. So for the torture test today, the G Gable antenna is going into this canvas bag and it will be cinched tight. It will go into the pouch and the strap on this go bag, which is loaded up with tools. And then we're going to throw some tools and some ham gear around and see what the durability is. Uh, not just my tools, but the antenna. Drop test number one. Okay, so nothing on the mechanism itself. Let's make sure it still slides. Does it still stay in place? Yes, it does. I'm not so much worried about this, but no damage there either. Back in for drop test number two. And drop test number two. All right, we're tearing up our bag. A couple of uh, holes in our brand new bag. No damage to the antenna mechanism. Still slides. Still holds. No damage to the whip. Again, not really focusing on the whip, focused on this. Drop test number three. Drop test number four. And drop test number five. Just to show you it was really loaded up. And we are in fantastic shape. No damage to the FRP, fiberglass reinforced polymer. Sliding mechanism works the entire way. And it holds. No damage to the whip. Pass. It's official, the Gable GRA7350T lightweight HF portable antenna graduates to the HOA ham lightweight go bag. Notice the emphasis on lightweight go bag because of course I have more than one that we'll talk about in the future. Hope you found this useful. Talk to you soon friend 73.